Okay, uh, we'll get started with today's lecture. So, in the previous class, we talked about probability distributions, probability measures, which essentially measures the weight of subsets of the original set of all unknowns. So, so we have omega, which is the set of all unknowns. We have A, which is a subset of omega called events. Sometimes people write a set of events as two raised to omega. So two raised to omega is the notation for power set of omega. And people typically denote 2 raised to omega as set of all events. Okay, so this is the set of all subsets of omega or the power set of omega. So this is also power set of omega. Is everyone familiar with power set? Okay, it's the set of all subsets. And then we had probability measure which maps 2 raised to omega to a number between 0 to 1. So it maps an event to the probability, the chance that that particular event would occur. Okay. The goal for today's class is to try and understand some of the very uh, commonly used distributions. So what are the commonly used probability distributions that we will use in this class and that are in general used in a wide variety of day-to-day uh, -day activities. And those distributions, the st distributions that we will study will be for omega 0, 1, omega r, omega n, omega 0, 1 raised to n, and so on. So depending on what subset, what the set of all unknowns is, so omega equals 0, 1 is something like head or tails, um, or it could be like on and off, or communicate or not communicate. So those are the classes where omega is just a 0, 1 variable, and then omega equals to r, or a subset of R happens in a variety of situations like temperature of the, uh, in the city of Columbus. So that's omega equals to R, actually it will be a subset of R. Omega equals to N typically appears when you could pick any value between one or maybe N union zero. So N union zero. So you could have uh, omega including zero or omega may not include zero. But in those situations, you could have any number between 0 all the way to plus infinity. But it has to be a discrete variable. So this is, for instance, number of customers going to Starbucks today, number of customers going to Panera Bread, number of accidents happening in the city of Columbus, number of crimes happening in the city of Columbus. So those are the situations where omega takes only natural numbers. It's naturally just a natural number. And then omega equals 0, 1 raised to n. This happens when um, you have some event that happens again on and off events that happens over n time steps or head and tail, so n tosses of a coin. So those are the situations where omega is 0, 1 raised to n. That's the set of all unknowns. So we'll talk about distributions over like very uh, widely used distributions over these spaces. And all of these distributions will be used when we talk about, when you are doing the assignments in the future on various topics, including autonomous vehicles and chemical plants and so on. Okay, so that's the goal for today. Before I jump into this topic and introduce to you those definitions, I want to make a, uh, I want to introduce the notion of independent and identically distributed random variables. So, Remember from our previous class, x 
maps to omega to r is called a random variable. But even though I have written r, sometimes it could just be natural number, sometimes it could be a whole number, sometimes it could be an integer, but all of them are subsets of r, so I'm just trying to be a bit more general here and just use x from omega to r to denote a random variable. But you know, many a times random variables can only take integer values or, or uh, natural number values and so on. But just try to be more general here. So, um, so x from omega to r is a random variable. Now let's consider a situation, uh, oh, so the topic that I want to first talk about is independent and identically distributed. Random variables, RV. Okay. Consider a random uh, variable, which is how many accidents, how many road accidents happen within the city of Columbus on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you think that it's a random variable? Do you think that the number of accidents that, happen in, that happens in Columbus on a day-to-day -day basis, is that a random variable or is that a deterministic variable? It's a random variable, right? So every day we know that certain number of accidents would happen. It could be one accident, it could be zero accident, it could be one accident or it could be 5,000 accidents. We don't know, it's a random variable. Okay, now let's look at a sequence of accidents that happened in 2021, okay? So some accidents happen on January 1st, then accidents happen on January 2nd, and then on January 3rd, and so on and so forth. What do you think is the correlation between accidents that happen on day one versus accidents that happen in day two? And what I mean by correlation, if I told you that there were 20 accidents on January 1st of 2021, would you be able to tell me how many accidents would happen, or at least you know, give me a ballpark figure of how many accidents would happen on January 2nd or January 3rd or January 4th? Would you be able to give me some number? No, okay. So in this situation, what you are seeing is, even if I know something happened on day one, there is nothing much I can say about what will happen in day two, okay? And that's the notion of independence, okay, independence. So two random variables, which is number of accidents that happen on January 1st and number of accidents that happen on January 2nd, those are independent random variables. Okay, so those are independent random variables, so knowledge of one does not allow you to estimate the second part of the, like the second uh, random variable. Let's look at another example. Consider the temperature of Columbus today. Like, let's go outside and measure whatever the temperature outside is. And let's try to think about what the temperature after an hour is going to be. So it's, it's about 1 p.m. right now. And we can measure the temperature, and let's say the temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you say something about what the temperature at 2 p.m. is going to be? What do you think? So if it is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, what, what's your gut feeling what the temperature is going to be at? at 2 p.m. Sorry? About 70, 71, maybe 69, right? So in this particular example, even though the temperature at 2 p.m. is a random variable, it has some correlation with what the temperature is at this point of time. And that's where you don't have independence, okay? So there is no independence in that particular problem. Okay. So you understand what the notion of independence is, right? So let's say uh, a customer arrived in Panera Bread and ordered something. What's the time gap between when the next customer is going to arrive and order the next item from Panera Bread, right? So that's also an independent event because it's not like one customer arrived, so the, it correlates what the other customers are going to do in the future. So those are the situations where there is a natural independence. You might be checking your email right now, 
But the number of email checks that are happening at every point of time, it's a completely independent event from one time step to another. It's not correlated. So there are situations where independence is natural in a sequence of random variables that you're going to see. Now, let's understand the notion of identically distributed. Let's look at the accident example in the city of Columbus. Did something change in the city of Columbus between January 1st and January 2nd of this year? Not really, okay? So everything, there were same number of people, maybe like a few people came in, few people went out. But, you know, it's very small number. So we kind of assume in this situation that the city of Columbus actually didn't change. The road network didn't change. The number of vehicles didn't change between January 1st and January 2nd of this year. So if the number of vehicles hasn't changed, if the road network hasn't changed, if the people haven't changed, it's reasonable to assume that the distribution of accidents that happen on day one, the probability measure of accidents that happen on day one is the same as the probability distribution of the actions that happen on day two, okay? And that's the notion of identically distributed. We expect that the two random variables will have the same distribution over time. Okay, so the way you define this independent and identically distributed random variables, you have xi, which maps omega to r, and they are independent. What do I mean by independent? If I pick subsets ai omega, and I look at the probability of x1 in a1, x2 in a2, xn in an, then it's equal to probability x1 in a, probability x2 in a2, x1 in a1, x2 in a2, multiplied by probability of xn in an. That's the definition of independence. And this, of course, holds true for all AI subset of omega. Actually, let me write it in a, in a, so we say x1 to xn are independent random variable if this is the way probability is distributed. So if I look at the chance of a sequence of events, it's basically equal to the chance of individual events multiplied together. So if probability of x1 in a1, so let x equal to number of accidents in Columbus and let's say the probability that x is in 0 to 10, well, I should write it as 0 0.2 and probability that x is in 1 to 5 is 0 0.1. So probability that there are between 0 to 10 accidents is 0 
probability that there are there is one to five accidents is 0 0.1 and I'm looking at two different random variables that are independent of each other well I'm actually assuming that they are also identically distributed here um, I haven't introduced the notion of identically distributed yet. Okay, I'll, I'll get into identical distribution very quickly, uh, but let me just finish this example. So x1 is in 0 to 10, and x2 is in 1 to 5 is equal to the probability that on January 1st, there, are, there is between 0 to 10 accidents and on January 2nd, there is between 1 to 5 accidents is equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.1, 0 0.02. Okay, so the probability of both these events happening is 2%. Uh, That's the chance. Yes. Uh, well, probability measure is actually defined on the power set. So P is a function 2 raised to omega to 0, 1. So it's defined on the power set to 0, 1. But it has to satisfy the disjointness property. So if you pick a set of disjoint sets and you take the union of those sets and you take the probability measure, it has to be the sum of individual probabilities. So that's the Kolmogorov axiom, it's called Kolmogorov's axiom, and that needs to be satisfied by this measure, probability measure. We talked about it in the previous class. Okay, so this is how, so this is the, so if, if x1 and x2 are independent, then this is what the distribution looks like. This is the chance of having two events uh, in, a, in a sequence. It's just multiplication of individual chances. This is the notion of independence. An identical distribution just means, so let me erase this side. I hope everyone has written it. So, x1 and x2 have identical distributions if probability of x1 in A is equal to probability of x2 in A for all A in omega. So they have the same distribution. The two concepts of independence and identical distribution are quite different. Independence means joint distribution has to be multiplication of individual distributions, or joint uh, chance has to be equal to the multiplication of individual chances. That's independence. Identical distribution just means that this condition would be satisfied for all events which are subset of omega. Okay? You could have non-independent identical distribution. You could have identical distribution but, uh, no, you could have non-identical distribution but independence. So one way to think about non-identical distribution and independence is number of accidents in Columbus versus number of accidents in Cincinnati. Okay, so Cincinnati is a separate city, it has a completely separate demographics, completely separate node, road network, and a set of different set of people, different set of cars. Uh, so the number of accidents that happens in Columbus has some distribution, number of accidents that happens in Cincinnati has some other distribution. 
So it's non-identical distribution, but they are independent events. So number of accidents in Columbus is not correlated with number of accidents in Cincinnati. They are not equal. It's non-identical distribution, but they are independent events. So you can have four possibilities. One is independent and identical distribution. Second is not independent, but identical distribution. I didn't give you an example for this. Non-identical distribution, independent, And fourth is non-independent and non-identical distributions. So all these four things can happen, and we are only going to concentrate on this one in today's class. And we will talk about this part in some of the subsequent classes, where you have identical distribution but non-independent uh, distribution. This is the case. This is the case in control systems, in feedback control systems, or autonomous systems. And we are going to exploit this non-independence to design detection schemes in, for, against cyber attacks in, in control systems. So we will definitely focus on this part very, very strongly in one of the subsequent lectures sometime in October. Yes? Yes. But X1 and X2 are not related, right? You That's right. Uh, like, suppose uh, X1 is uh, the number of accidents happened in Columbus, and X2 is the number of accidents happened in Cincinnati. That's right. Okay. Uh, but they all belong to the set Omega. Like, uh, Correct. So Omega is the same, but the distributions are non-identical. They are independent events. So number of accidents in Columbus is independent of number of accidents in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. right? Um, but uh, so they are independent, but they are non-identical. So uh, let's consider a different example. So Columbus is a city. Uh, let's consider Mansfield, Ohio, which is another very small city. It has maybe like one tenth of the size of Columbus. You cannot expect to have the same number of accidents in Columbus versus in, in Mansfield, Ohio, right? And so it's, I, it's independent, but it's non-identical distribution. Non-identical means that the two distributions are not equal. So probability of accidents in Columbus in the set A is not equal to the probability of accidents in Mansfield in A. You pick the same set A, so let's say you consider 0 to 10. Uh, the, num the probability, the chance that there will be 0 to 10 accidents in Columbus is not equal to the chance that there will be 0 to 10 accidents in Mansfield. If you have a population of 1,000 people, you probably will have zero accidents on a day-to-day -day basis. Like with high probability, you will not have any accidents. On the other hand, in Columbus, you will definitely have maybe like uh, 100 accidents every day. Okay, because it's just so many people. So it's very high chance that you will have 100 accidents every day. So it's non-identical. There is a non-equality sign here. That's non-identical. Non-identical distribution. How is it to I mean, it's not, right? So that's why it's non-identical. So in identical distribution, you have equality here. On day one versus on day two is the same. Okay, so that's identical distribution. Uh, you know, uh, from cyber attack perspective, one thing that I wanted to mention, whenever a catastrophe happens, things that are independent becomes highly correlated. So consider the following situation. Let's say we have flooding in my house. It's uh, independent of flooding in your house or your, your apartment or whatever, wherever you stay. And, uh, and so these are independent events. But if there is a, 
if there is a lot of rain in Columbus, all of our homes will get flooded at the same time. And so uncorrelated events, independent events, suddenly becomes correlated events when a catastrophe happens. Now, why does it matter in cyber attack? If there is a large scale cyber attack on a large system, things that you assume to be independent becomes correlated at that time. Okay, and you no longer have enjoy that freedom of assuming everything is independent and so I can secure this part of the subsystem and not worry about other parts of the subsystem because they are all independent according to your uh, viewpoint. But when the actual attack happens, everything becomes correlated and no, you no longer have that luxury of treating each of these subsystems as independent or the attacks on the subsystems as independent attacks. It's all correlated. So that is something you should keep in mind when you are, uh, I mean, all of this is something that you will keep in mind 10 years into your career. Of course, starting out, you will have to look at individual components and individual subsystems. But at some point of time, you will have to look into catastrophic failures and you will have to make sure that things you assume to be independent are no longer independent. And so how do you exploit that correlation to do something better or mitigate those correlations in order to do something better. So that's something you will have to think about later on in your career. But keep in mind, things that are treated independent may not necessarily be independent when something happens. Another example of this is climate change, okay? So if you look at the history of insurance, they assumed all these activities like, you know, flooding in Louisiana is different from flooding in New York, and so therefore they don't have to, like, you can provide some insurance in Louisiana, some insurance in New York, and you should be happy. Now, climate change happened, and so if there is flooding in Louisiana, it just so happened that hurricane is going to pass through New York and is going to dump a lot of water in New York. And so there will be flooding in New York and there will be flooding in Louisiana, and they are no longer uh, independent events. And this has, of course, happened in the recent hurricane Ida, which went through Louisiana and then uh, went through New York. And there was massive flooding in New York and there was massive flooding in Louisiana. So it, it's, it happens, okay? So climate change is making independent events, they are, it's making them correlated. There is forest fire in California, there is drought in Arizona, there is a, a, a sort of a, a ice or, or a snowfall, heavy snowfall in Texas, and then there is a Hurricane Ida passing through the uh, east coast of United States. And all of these are correlated events because of climate change. So climate change is correlating all these catastrophic events that are happening across the country, which used to be independent 100 years ago. And actually, if you go to insurance industry, this is something that they are thinking about, like how do, how do you price insurance, given that all the independent events are getting correlated now. So it's something that they are carefully thinking about, but they don't have an answer to. Okay, uh, is the notion of identical distribution and independent distributions clear? Okay, independent random variables and random variables with identical distribution. So now let's get into some uh, probability distributions, some widely used probability distributions. I'm going to erase the board. Has everyone received this handout of list of distributions? Anybody who has not received it? You have not received it? Can you pass on to it? All right, so I'm going to start with discrete distribution where omega is a discrete set. So the first one is Omega is 0, 1, and the name of the distribution is Bernoulli, parameterized by P. Bernoulli, P, random variable, where x would take 0 if uh, with probability P. and we'll take one with probability one minus p.
So this is the notation for discrete variables. You say x is going to be 0 with probability p, which means that probability of x equal to 0, I mean, this is equivalent to saying probability of x equal to 0 is p, probability of x equal to 1 is 1 minus p. This is a Bernoulli random variable. Okay. I have a communication system and sometimes I feel like communicating with probability P or sorry. Uh, I, sometimes I feel like not communicating with probability p, and sometimes I feel like communicating with probability 1 minus p. And uh, that's my strategy. Okay? Yes, please. Uh, so like sort of going back to the climate change example. Yes. Let's say I have an insurance company and I have this model which was like trying to predict uh, the probability of an event happening and then like charging the insurance. Right. That's right. So, given this event, is there like a sound mathematical framework to sort of update the model? Right. Very, very good point. So, the question is uh, climate change is happening, and so I'm getting new data about the catastrophic events that are happening around the country. Is there a way, sound mathematical way, to update the probability distribution model over time? And the fact of the matter is yes, there is, but uh, but in order to get a sound distribution, you have to have lots of data. And in this particular situation, uh, you don't really have lots of data. Like the data can only be collected over several years. But you still have to be in business until those many number of years. So it's, it's kind of very problematic situation. You can't update the model, model unless you have a lot of data. And right now, they are still collecting data that, oh, like for instance, people wouldn't have thought that Texas could go, Texas could freeze in, uh, in winter, but it did happen, right? Or people didn't know that California and uh, Arizona area would suffer from a 20 year long drought, but it's happening. In fact, the reservoirs in Arizona is, like the freshwater reservoirs in Arizona is below like 33% of their capacity, which is, a, which is again a catastrophic event because now the farmers will not have enough water to farm their land. And so people are thinking about what's the future of those cities and those, those communities where they don't have enough fresh water. So all of these events are, are uh, people are still thinking about, they didn't have data, what happens when the water table goes so down. Now they are collecting that data and hopefully they'll update their model in two, three years. But by that time, they, you know, they would have lost a lot of money. Right, but I charge you for insurance today, and you are insured for the next one year. And in some cases, you are insured for the next four years or five years, right? So, so today, I don't know what event is going to happen in 2022, March, but something would happen. I, I don't know what would happen, but something could happen, and it could mean a lot of uh, payouts for you. Uh, oh, actually, related to that, uh, there is research happening on how to ensure cyber attacks. So there was a gas pipeline, it was under cyber attack. I think uh, they lost maybe like 10 million or so dollars in the matter of a couple of days. And there should be some insurance way, insurance mechanism to ensure these losses. Uh, again, very there is a lack of data about how much loss can you suffer from these attacks. But it needs to be there because these companies will otherwise go out of business every time there is an attack, right? So, so something to again think about because no matter which area of cybersecurity you will work in, uh, this is something that you will encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Like how do you measure? So there is some uncertainty. How do you move that uncertainty to the risk category? And it's difficult to know that right now. 
And if you want to understand, uh, like if you, are, if you are heavily interested in these topics that I'm talking about, you have to go and take some statistics classes because that's where you will study the underlying foundational mathematics for understanding some of the things I'm talking about in the class. Okay, so this is Bernoulli distribution. Any other question? Okay. This is Bernoulli distribution. Now, I want to talk about binomial distribution. So your omega is 0, 1 raised to n. And so the binomial distribution will be um, a sequence of so x in 0, 1 raised to n will actually be 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Something like that. So x is going to look like a sequence with length, or a sequence of length n. So the probability that x is equal to x is given by n actually uh, okay i'm going to define a random variable y as summation of xi i equals 1 to n so this is x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and so on and i'm going to let y be the summation of xi so i'm counting how many zeros are there in this particular uh, random variable. I think I need to count zeros, not ones. So I have to write 1 minus xi. Sorry about that. So I'm counting how many times zero appeared in this sequence. That's my random variable. And so the binomial distribution is probability y equals to y is n choose y, p raised to y, 1 minus p raised to y. Oh, yes, uh, sorry, n minus y. I guess in this case, omega should be 0 to n, not 0, 1 raised to n. But this is how you come up with y. So let me write it as omega tilde, and then omega would be 0 to n. And x i's are i i d. independent and identically distributed. Okay. Let me go back to this uh, example. Not example, but what is happening here. So I have Bernoulli p random variables. I have n of them. I, I toss the coin several times. And I want to count how many heads I got in n tosses of the coin. This is the distribution of that random variable. How many times you got head in n tosses of the coin. Uh, you are doing on off of some, some uh, uh, process. And in n time steps, how many times you have turned the thing off? That's the measured through this particular uh, random variable. So if I have a specification which says something like, in order to control this chemical plant in a stable fashion, you need to send at least, not at least, on an average five commands per minute, five control commands per minute. So you want to make sure that the probability of y to be equal to 5 is very high 
in that situation, or maybe six or maybe seven. So those are the situations where this sort of distribution is useful. And we'll worry about this distribution in one of the, uh, one of the cyber attack mitigation strategy in uh, autonomous vehicles. So that's going to come in November. We'll talk about, we'll come back to this distribution. Okay, let's talk about geometric distribution. So omega is between zero to n geometric P And this particular distribution is, I'm doing n tosses of the coin. What is the first time a head appears in my tosses? So, the, so xi is iid Bernoulli p random variable. And what's the probability? No. Y is first time instant xi is equal to zero. First time xi is equal to zero. And so the probability of y is equal to y is given by p1 minus p y minus one. Okay, so starting from Bernoulli distribution, which is an on-off process, if we have a sequence of IID Bernoulli random variables, which is typically happens if you have a sequence of random on-off random on processes, um, you can come up with binomial distribution, which counts number of times uh, zero happened in, the, in this sequence. And then you have another process called geometric process where the first time instant xi is equal to zero. Okay, so we came up with two different distributions starting from Bernoulli distribution. The next distribution I want to talk about is Poisson distribution. Here, omega is 0, 1, 2, so on, all the way to infinity. And the probability that x is equal to x is given by lambda. So lambda is a parameter, lambda raised to y, lambda raised to x e raised to minus lambda over x factorial. Right, so lambda is greater than zero. That's the parameter that specifies Poisson distribution. Here x is number of customers who entered Panera Bread, or whatever your favorite shop is, in the next one hour. That's Poisson distribution. So I'm looking at the interval one to two p.m. And I want to count how many customers came to Panera Bread. It will, be, it will have a Poisson distribution from uh, one hour to another or one day to another day.
Can you think of other examples where you have this kind of processes where there is number of something entering something? Can you think of other processes? There has to be some inherent independence between how many people entered at x time step versus x plus 1 time step. Let me give you another example. Number of people who called Uber between 1 to 2 p.m. Okay, that's a Poisson distribution, Poisson distributed random variable. Number of people who called Uber. Number of packets that entered the router at a specific duration. So in the router case, so of course in the case of number of customers who entered Panera Bread or Starbucks or Uber or Lyft, we talk about the time scale of an hour. But when I'm talking about number of packets that entered a router, we are talking about milliseconds, or we are talking about microseconds, because those processes work at very, very fast time scale. Okay, so the time step really matters depending on the application. Um, and, and in this case, depending on what application you're looking at, you will have different time scales. So we will look at one example of cyber attack detection and mitigation in the context of routing in communication network. So you will have Poisson arrival process for packets and the router has to make a decision on how to route the packets and there is an adversary sitting on the router making some, like sort of deceiving the router into making wrong decision so that there is a congestion in the network. So we'll talk about that and their Poisson distribution will come up as a natural sort of model for how the packets are arriving in the communication network. Okay, so number of people checking their emails in the, in, in the next five minutes, that's also going to be an approximately Poisson distribution. Uh, we did a study uh, in, in, in the recent past, we did a study where we looked at how many people took yellow cabs in New York and it was approximately Poisson distributed random variable. Okay, so you can actually see it working in practice. Uh, any questions so far on these distributions? Okay, one important thing that you should remember is having these models of distribution becomes extremely important and crucial in designing detection schemes in cyber attacks. And that's because of millions of possible distribution that the packets would satisfy, this distribution turns out to be the most appropriate distribution. And now how many parameters are there in this distribution? If you want to specify this distribution, what is the parameter that you need to understand? Just one, lambda, that's it. So among all the million possible distributions that could be the model for how packets are arriving in communication network, this one stands out because it, it works in practice and you can literally, you just need to specify one parameter, lambda, which is something greater than zero, that's it. And you specified the entire distribution. Same thing with Bernoulli, random variable. Just one parameter, p, between zero to one. Geometric, p, one parameter between zero to one. And uh, in the case of binomial, again, p and n. So one, two parameters, uh, p and n. Those are the two parameters that specifies the entire distribution. So that's why these distributions become important because if something is anomalous, these values, these scalar values will change and that's what you are going to detect when you are detecting an attack. Does that make sense? And we'll talk about it in, in Friday's class or maybe on uh, next week's class. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, continuous distributions. And among continuous distribution, we have uniform, so omega is theta 1 to theta 2. Uh, so it's a, dis it's a subset of R, it's a closed interval of R. And we want to have uniform. Theta 1 to theta 2.
ओके वन ऑफ द सिंप्लीफिकेशन वी आर गोइंग टू मेक वेन वी टॉक अबाउट कंटिन्यूस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वेर ओमेगा इज अ सबसेट ऑफ आर और ओमेगा इज इंटायर आर वी आर गोइंग टू अज्यूम दैट इट हैज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज डेंसिटी फंक्शन probability density function and what that means is if i want to compute probability of x is in a all i have to do is integrate over the subset a of f of x dx and this is the probability density function Okay, so this is a simplification I'm making. Uh, I don't necessarily have to have this form uh, for continuous variable, but assuming that this is the form that is satisfied makes our life much easier in many practical scenarios. So we'll just assume that our probability measure has a density function, and probability of x in A is equal to integral over A f of x dx. where f is known as the probability density function of the random variable x okay so now we are looking at this omega theta 1 to theta 2 we are looking at uniform distribution so i'm going to define my f of x to be 1 over theta 2 minus theta 1 and this is of course true for x is in omega density function okay so in this case you can see that the density function doesn't change with x it remains the same uh between theta 2 and theta 1 or theta 1 and theta 2 so that's a uniform distribution uniform means it's it's it has the same weight across the entire uh, uh set of omega The second distribution is normal distribution a very important class of distributions where omega is r and f of y or f of x is 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma so sigma is outside of the square root exponential minus x minus mu square over sigma square 2 sigma square this is what a normal density function looks like okay so a uniform distribution as you can see uh, on the board you can specify a uniform distribution by theta 1 and theta 2 and you can specify a normal distribution by just two parameters sigma and mu that's it so just by knowing these two parameters you have specified the entire distribution here just by knowing these two parameters you have specified the entire distribution 
So we'll talk a little bit more about other continuous distributions and the implications of these distributions. And then we'll uh, move on to statistics. Thank you for your attention. See you on uh, Friday. <laughs>